Hey everybody, welcome to the live stream, or the not live stream, whatever you want to fucking call it. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know anything. Man, uh. I know. We don't talk about Bruno, I know that. We don't, <laughs> we don't talk about Bruno in my house. I think it's about time we people start talking about him. Yeah, hell of a guy. It's a cat piss flashlight. <laughs> hell yeah. It's a blue cat, fi- blue. Uh, it's the blue cat piss flashlight. Hell yeah, I like those. Mm-hmm. It's also really good at figuring out where the semen is. Finding cum. Yeah, don't shine that in my room. Jersey Pete, next time you're in Ohio, suck my dick. Yes, but <laughs> then we're gonna go to we're gonna we're gonna skip the Pine Club. We're gonna go to the Oakwood Club, and um. I want you guys to try the steak there. We're gonna go to Skyline. It rivals. <laughs> I, I I I have to say, um, the Oakwood Club. It, it it it's better than the Pine Club. It's just ever been extraordinary. It's extraordinary. <laughs> they got uh yeah, just fucking incredible. But thanks for being here, everybody. Jesse moved? Did he move his tent? Did he move everything? Did he? Well, I mean, what? Oh, what shit. is going on? What is going on with Jesse? <clears throat> it's a late cast, that's for sure. Yeah, kind of. Let's get it going. <laughs> Let's not talk about what we were doing before this. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know. They oh, don't Jesse know. lives in an apartment now. Fuck yeah. No, do you fucking sell out? Congratulations, buddy. Let's get this going. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Cream Spot, a.k.a. the Brohio Podcast. I'm one half of the shit show. I'm the delicious Nicolicious. I'm here with my best pal in the entire world. Rob Dog, hey, guys. I'm very thirsty. Some people, uh, they message us, and and they say, seems like you guys have been friends for a long time. Funny about that. And we can say, yes, we have. (laughs) 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 You know what's funny, man, is um, I got to drive past your old house yeah. all the time when I'm going to my parents' house. <laughs> what used to be there? What and I, <laughs> I remember just to the right of that smoker's deck at that warehouse next to you, Yeah, I did a front flip into the side of the building and put a huge fucking dent, and the dent's still there. In the is it? <laughs> Hell <laughs> the yeah. The still there right next to the uh, little smoker's deck. Yeah, a big distribution warehouse of some kind. Yeah, they had a, um, they had a, like... A really like one of the really long dumpsters, and then they had like a smaller, normal sized dumpster up in front. And for some reason, like once a month, they would always have um, single roses, like individually wrapped, that would always be like the bottom would be filled with them. That's weird. It was really weird. I'd always take them out of there. You know what? Uh, by our house where we where we grew up at, uh, my little brother was more about this than I was, but the um, manufacturing warehouse for the alien workshop yeah, was over there yeah. right right down the road from your house and dude he would go up there and go dumpster diving yeah a lot of my every friends day did. yeah skateboards and they would throw out just like rough like yeah. r- barely damaged ones and yeah that's all my friends got so many decks from the trash cans yeah good shit man. yeah back in the day i never skateboarded me neither i, I tr- tried but i was awful uh when i was about 10 or 11 i had a mariah carey cd and i traded it to some girl down the street she had a skateboard yeah I didn't know what I was trading for, but sure, I was a little chunky. I broke it pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, but that was my, um, you know, I embarked into the extreme sports. Yeah, yeah. That's as far as I got, then I doubled back to PlayStation, got on Tony Hawk and <laughs> shit. That was my, that's still my jam. Yeah, I was really big into the into the culture and everything like that, but I wasn't really ever a, I wasn't a doer. I was just a watcher. Oh. <laughs> kind of how I you're, still am. You're a cuck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're a skateboard cuck. <laughs> skateboard cuck. <laughs> exactly. Well, hey, happy birthday to Dustin from Davey. They're uh, they're big fans of the show. Uh, apparently, Dustin's a big Bengals fan, just like me, just like you. So, happy birthday, Dirty Dusty from Davey, you fucking you homosexuals. <laughs> thanks for writing us, and uh, thanks for reaching out. We, 
We appreciate it. If you got a birthday, you need a birthday shout out, send us an email. I can't make any promises because yeah, we'll see what we can I do. read about three percent of what gets put through. But I read even less than that. So. Fucking happy birthday. Yeah. How about thanks to our new Patreon subscribers? Sure, let's go. Mitch Cupkey. Mitch Cup of Pee. I drink a I ate a bunch of asparagus today and my piss stinks so bad <laughs> I can't even I can't even be in the bathroom with myself when I oh, eat right I'm now. sorry. Happy or uh, thanks b- thanks Mitch. Appreciate it. <laughs> bitch. Appreciate, thanks, Mitch. Project Dead Eyes, thank you very much. That's a gnarly looking logo they got right there. Yeah. Death's Dead Eyes with a Z. Oh yeah, gotta emphasize that Z. How about Katrina? Thanks, Katrina, for the Patreon pledge. Uh Fawn Steel. Thank you very much. That's kind of nasty. That's like a pornography name. I always right like there, that name, Fawn. Fawn Steel. <laughs> In our next episode, Katrina and Fawn Steel in <laughs> Vagina Lickers. You think, <laughs> did you buy that one? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely buy that one. Yeah, you know what you're getting. I like the ones that <laughs> leave nothing to the imagination. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, fuck yeah, not a dick in this movie. <laughs> yeah, no dicks. How about uh, Kona? Kana? Kana. Kana Wooly. It's fucking Kana. Kana. That's tropical, dude. She <laughs> definitely knows how to cook pork. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Kana. It's just like a New York guy whose name's Connor. He says not <laughs> to fucking spell it. Hey, it's Connor. It's fucking Connor. I got I to gotta sound my name out. Spell it phonetically. Uh, Nastia Killpack. Oh, yeah. That's definitely number four Getting or five. Nastia. Four or fifth, fourth or fifth ranked Call of Duty <laughs> player in the world right now. <laughs> How about last, Anthony Carpinetti. Anthony, thanks for letting us into the mob. Thanks for letting us uh, be in the mafia and coming to your home, Mr. Carpinetti. Carpet- hey, it's a uh, fucking Tony. Hey, uh, it's fuck- fucking Tony Carpinetti. Carpen- hey, I'm trying to listen to a fucking podcast here. Hey, Ma, you know I'm trying to listen to a fucking podcast. Keep it the fuck down, all right? <laughs> I'm not trying to take you anywhere today. Hey, uh, fucking Tony wants to gobble goo. Come on, gobble, gobble goo. Get, bring it on. It's a gobble goo. <laughs> gobble goo. I gobble goo last night <laughs> all up in her. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? How about um, a little newspaper article for you this week? If you guys want to hear it. Sure. I heard this. Because you don't have a fucking choice. We're going to read it whether you want us to or not. <laughs> I uh, actually had a dig for this one. I found it. I said, what What a blessing this is. No. Oh. Flight delays are getting crappier. This is from uh, the New York Post. An unhinged British Airways passenger took travel chaos to new heights when he defecated on the floor of the plane and smeared it into the seals. (laughs) Oh, God. I'm sorry, the seats. Okay. (laughs) Those poor seals. (laughs) 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 Smeared it into the seats. Sickening travelers, according to a report. The unnamed passenger inexplicably flipped out in protest moments before flying from London's Heathrow Airport to Lag- Lagos, Nigeria, uh, Wakanda Forever, on October 7th, <laughs> according to The Sun. He peeled off his pants and let loose on the aircraft's main floor before rubbing the feces into the carpet, curtain, and seats. Hell yeah. Prompting emergency services, uh, emergency services officials to rush in, according to a witness cited by the outlet, Quote, during boarding, a passenger stripped from the waist down and defecated on the <laughs> galley floor. Yeah, he sat in it and rubbed it onto the galley floor and aisle carpets, the witnesses report states. He walked in it and started running up the aisles as far as door four. He smeared his arms to elbow. <laughs> oh, shit. Literally. <laughs> he smeared his arms to elbow and fecal matter and door seats as well. Officials considered the incident hygienic biohazard, according to the report. The curtains and carpets were severely contaminated. Very important that a hygienic biohazard and deep clean is carried out and properly supervised and signed off, it states. The flight BA-075 was delayed for three hours while they uh, did a little proper cleanup. We apologized. We apologize to our customers for the delay to their flight and arrange for an alternative aircraft to allow them to continue their journey, British Airways told the Sun. It's unclear whether the defecator was charged. Hmm. You know I be pooping, bro. <laughs> you know I be pooping. Uh, I've never shit on a plane before. Me either, man. And when I, because I heard this, um, I heard this news article on our local radio station. 
and I took a mental note. I said, I got to double back and, and get that article so I can read it on the show. But while I was looking for it, I found another article from British Airways from 2015. <laughs> this jet had taken off and it, it, it made it like, you know, several minutes away from the airport. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as they got up in the air, like cruising altitude, this dude went and shit. And I guess he fucking it shit. And it stunk so bad that uh, they had to they had to reroute the plane and go back and land. Holy shit! Because <laughs> it recycles all the air inside the plane. That's fun. Yeah, man. So his fucking doo doo stunk so bad they had to go back and redo it. They had to start over. I think I think I could make that happen. <laughs> I know I know entire, you could entire plane. Yeah, I mean I know you could. I th- I think I got you know I'm I'm confident in my abilities. Some fucking firepower, Jack. It depends. I mean, yeah, if I ate like a like a tub of ice cream or something, you just, you just ate a tub of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll eat your shit. Just we'll see how bad mine. Just ate a tub of poop <laughs> out of a trough. You know how drunk I'd be have to eat poop. Not very, but. <laughs> All right. Well, there's not much to talk about at the beginning of this episode, Rob. Okay, yeah. This is a longer one. This is going to be a longer episode, so I figure we just fucking get right into it. Okay, let's, let's do it. How do you feel about that? I'm ready, man. Well, first off, let's take a take a quick pause for 14 or 15 of our sponsors. All right, we're back. That was great, right? I know you guys like making us millions of dollars. <laughs> we're so fucking rich that we can't even afford to shut up and do other stuff besides make a podcast. I love it. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, with Christmas coming up, that's a hard fucking time of the year, dude, for a lot of people. So, Ooh, yeah, it is. I do want to say, and I'm thinking of all you guys, we got each other. We had a lot of people reach out and say, you know, you helped, you helped us through a dark time. We got a lot of encouraging emails. We love reading your, your encouraging emails, so don't hesitate, though. Write us an email, brohiopodcast at gmail.com. Yeah. So we're thinking about starting another spinoff of the show, I think. It's where you guys send us a story, and it's either completely far-fetched or it's completely real. We read the story on the episode. This would be like a midweek thing, much like the Battlefield of Love. Yeah. And at the end of the story, we have to figure out whether you're telling the truth or you're lying. And then in a separate email, you send the answer to whether your story was true or your story was false. So we're uh, still hammering out the details on that one. But, uh, yeah, if you guys think that would be something you want to do, maybe start trying to think up some fake shit. to Or real shit. Or real shit. Stuff that nobody believes and you tell them. Yeah, I love real shit. I love fucking tits. My <laughs> wife's tits. I boxed them earlier today. I don't have the dick for fucking tits. <laughs> <laughs> Titty fucking is the most boring thing ever, dude. It's, it's just dry, and you get why you I get mean, chafed tits, dude. I, I would just if my wife would let me fall asleep nursing, I would probably do that. Yeah, just fall asleep on a tit like a toddler. But that's kind of weird, you know. She kind of whatever. But man, uh, titty fucking is just a boring <laughs> art. It is not cool to me. It's not fun. <laughs> even, and I think even if I had a big old monster, a just big a old hog, big scary pee pee, uh-huh. I still wouldn't want a titty fuck. Yeah, well, I think that's more for just movies and stuff, man. I think so too. It's, I feel like the only payoff is if you if your dick is big enough to where like they can put their head down, and it can kind of touch their mouth a little bit. But I don't know. Dude, that's one of them cyborg dicks. That's a different yeah, level. That's, that's yeah. a different level. That's dick. a Tommy Lee dick. There's a couple guys that listen to this show. They're probably like, yeah, it's not that big of a <laughs> dick. Just, you know. Especially if there's a lot of cleavage. I mean, that's a lot of, that's a lot of titty to get through. Yeah, I'd like me some WAP. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some of that wing and pe- wings and pizza. Yeah, I don't mind it either. <sighs> All right. How about Nazi human experiments? <laughs> hey, talk about segues. What's up? <laughs> They were doing some serious titty fucking over there. If there's, if there's a one episode that's going to get us further perpetuated as being racists. <laughs> you know, man, I, I was reading uh, reading through this stuff and kind of going through some of the firsthand accounts of people that went through stuff. and mm-hmm. I, <laughs> The Holocaust was a bad deal. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Well, yeah. Dude, I like. I can't even begin to put into words how sad of a situation that was and just how hopeless and helpless those people must have felt. Like, mm-hmm. 
marched into a gas chamber for what? Like not even yeah, knowing yeah. what the fuck is going on. We're like in and not that this is not that this is linked in any way, but this it's still in the same wavelength. Like we're like a, a week and a half or a week out with all the latest Kanye shit too. Like with the anti-Semitic shit rant that he went on or whatever. I haven't paid a single bit of attention to what he said or what. My he's doing. thing is like, what the fuck did like the Jewish people do that's so fucking bad that they deserved all this shit for their entire history? I know they are cheap, <laughs> but that's not a reason to kill no, anybody. No, I'm fucking cheap sometimes. Yeah, I'm cheap I mean, too. Like, uh, I don't think that's a reason to kill me though. No, and I, it's just like. Um, I don't get it. Yeah, and the way I, and the way they talk about Jewish people, I, I and I've even heard Jewish people call themselves Jews, and Jews feels like a bad word to me. Yeah, I don't. I don't like saying it. Yeah, I like saying Jewish people. Yeah, just um, I don't know. It's, I guess it depends with like on how you like how you preface it. Like if you absolutely if you throw like an expletive in yeah. front of it fucking jews yeah, yeah that's that's definitely bad and if you're like man fucking jewish people <laughs> someone would be like oh they you know right right they do something cheap and you're like yeah but there's no reason to you don't think you should just call someone but, but a jew I, even if they are i mean I'm, and i should not be so uncultured i don't even know uh, more than a, a few jewish people and the jewish people that i do know they're no different than you and I. I know like ninety percent of Hollywood's Jewish. That's about all <laughs> I, I know. I have no idea, man. I, <laughs> but then again, I just don't really religion and Jewish people. They believe in something that's fake too, just like Christians do. <laughs> so at the end of the day, we are all the same. But man, the Holocaust, bad fucking deal. Oh, right? for sure. Yeah, it's, I can't even say it with with the, with the intent that I mean from my heart, but. God damn, those people lived through a fucking nightmare, man. And uh, the fact that, it, you know, some of them made it through, but the numbers, the amount of people that died during the Holocaust, mm -hmm. it's just staggering. It really is, and it's literally Sad. no fucking reason for it. I mean... Just kind of one motherfucker. One, one guy with a micro penis. I mean... One guy, it, was, it was a micro penis, and if you remember... Yeah, his, he pissed out the bottom of his dick. Yeah, his dick was like a faucet. They yeah. had cow utter dick the hole was at the bottom of his head yeah how do you even pee like that fuck him <laughs> he's dead but um it was um it was sobering reading through some of the some of the accounts from this and the most condensed organized research that i could find on this was <laughs> wikipedia unfortunately yeah so before everyone says they just they'll get all the research from wikipedia yeah we pretty much got all the research from wikipedia on this one because like i said it had the most condensed straight to the point organized research on this topic while it did happen stuff like this is hard to find without kind of doing some serious digging anything that kind of goes against against the cultural grain is getting harder and harder to find on just a basic google search so i try I, there for a while i was turning to duck duck go for a lot of stuff and now even still, I can see DuckDuckGo is starting to turn some of this stuff away and not bring it up in search results. So there's a couple other search engines I've been using. And slowly, little by little, some of the shit's just getting harder and harder to find mm -hmm. on our search engines. Yeah, we need to get back in touch with Jeeves and yeah, see what Jeeves. he's doing. See if that motherfucker Lycos is still going. I was going to say, maybe if, <laughs> maybe if Lycos is still going. Uh, Nazi human experimentation was a series of medical experiments on large numbers of prisoners, including children, by Nazi Germany and its concentration camps in the early to mid-1940s. During WW2 and the Holocaust, chief target populations include Romani, Sinti, uh, ethnic Poles, Soviet POWs, disabled Germans, and Jewish people from across Europe. Nazi physicians, oh man, these guys are fucking awful, Ooh. these physicians. Oh yeah. Nazi physicians and their assistants forced prisoners into participating. They did not willingly volunteer and no consent was ever given for the procedures. Typically the experiments were conducted without anesthesia Ugh. and resulted in death, trauma, disfigurement, or permanent disability and as such are considered examples of medical torture. At Auschwitz and other camps under the direction of 
Edward Wirth's selected inmates were subjected to various experiments that were designed to help German military personnel in combat situations develop new weapons, aid in the recovery of military personnel who had been injured, and to advance the Nazi racial ideology and eugenics, including the twin experiments of I gotta remember how I say how to say this. Joseph Mangela, I believe that's how it's pronounced. Uh, the Angel of Death is what his, his oh, name was. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, uh Herbert Heim conducted similar medical experiments at Mathhausen. Uh Mothhausen. 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 I am not a strong let's just put it this way, folks. Anything beyond basic what my uh my kids call sight words, mm-hmm. I don't get it. It's just tough. You know, I can't fucking read. I'm kind of an idiot. I dig it. Especially these German words, <laughs> these big tough. If anything beyond Wiener Schnitzel, you know, <laughs> I work for a German company and I often talk to some of my German colleagues. I've been learning a little bit of little bit like uh v gates it means what's up i say that a lot mm-hmm. and they're like oh they get excited because they hear me yeah and i'm working at it and they uh they respond back in german and i'll be like i have no fucking idea what you just <laughs> said right there a lot of the european languages you just kind of gotta sound pissed off when you say it <laughs> yeah man it's um something about it i do i i really i really enjoy the german culture and mm-hmm. That um, and they like to drink beer. I'm, I'm digging that. Yeah, dude, pretzels and yeah. beer. What the fuck sausage. is not to love about that? I love fucking beer. love sausage. I love, I love sucking cock. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love sausage, man. It's perfect sound bite opportunity right there. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, after the after the war, uh, so just to go back real quick, eugenics is a big deal here because eugenics. I knew wasn't even really for sure what eugenics was. I I kind of knew. But eugenics was kind of like what Hitler was working towards Mm -hmm. was perfecting a master race. And eugenics is kind of the study of, uh, you know, bloodline and kind of what your DNA makeup, not DNA, but kind of what makes you up and uh, different hereditary issues. So if like (laughs) just that they they just want only people alive that named named that's named Eugene and they had like past stuff in their government to where if you were stupid they would fucking kill you we're dead (laughs) they just kill you for being dumb man yeah i would have been shot the first day any undesirable trait they just would have said prove yourself to not be stupid i said i got nothing yeah i'm a big fat fucking idiot but listen to me i'm gonna make you laugh and if you need a couch moved i'm your guy I got. I can bring stuff to the table, but I'm kind of I'm kind of barrel chested, so I think they would keep me around strictly for work, like a workhorse. Yeah, and, th- and that's yeah. what they do. Like people that could work, they would keep them around. Um, but after the war, these crimes were tried at what became known as the doctor's trial, and we'll we'll talk about that a little later on. But there was a lot of under the table dealings going on with the doctor's trial as well, and it didn't matter. Who you were, or what you were doing, man. That was one of the sad parts reading through this research. Man, woman, cat, dog, child, it did not matter. They were experimenting on you. And when you and I think of a like the most radical science experiment we ever did in school, we dissected a frog. Yeah, we did. We took it apart. It stunk like I, shit. And that, that that's the thing that I remember the most, and that's really the only thing that I do remember is I remember they were in like a um I almost like a Ziploc bag full of juice. Yeah, and um, they were dead, and it smelled like shit. That's literally all that I remember. They're covered in formaldehyde or something like that. Something. I don't remember what it was. They were juicy though. And that was in seventh grade. We never really did anything past that. No. That was like a science experiment. We had. They used to do piglets back in the day, from what I remember. That's that's all cool stuff, man. Yeah. That's um, that's part of learning. That's part of it. Yeah. What the Nazis were doing is... Same exact thing with people. <laughs> no, no, this is not... They were doing it one step further. They do it till you, they do it to you while you're alive. Yeah, yeah. They were taking literally hundreds of thousands, millions of people, and they're like, ah, I don't know what... I don't know what Tetna... I don't know what Tetna does, or Tetna, or whatever it calls it, Tetna gangrene. 
Mm-hmm. Let's just give it to all of them real quick and see what it smells like, see what it does to <laughs> them. And then let's make them really cold and see how it takes to warm them up. But it didn't matter, man. They, they, they were just using all of these people from the concentration camps for their experiments. There was, uh, I'm kind of going through eugenics. Eugenics was what was the precursor for all of the experiments that they started to conduct during war, World War II. So in the 1930s, before the war started, um, the Germans had already began working on eugenics and perfecting the Aryan race, perfecting the master race of a completely pure, un, I guess, a, a, a bloodline that they could trace back as far as they needed to go with, uh, with no piss in the gene pool, if you yeah. know what I mean. What they would consider the untainted. Yeah. And they, that was what they wanted was like a perfect Aryan race, even though the guy running it all didn't look Aryan, (laughs) which is kind of weird. Lots of what we're talking about kind of links with what what they called racial hygiene. And this is during the, the Nazis rise to power. That's what they preached was racial hygiene. From and kind of interpret that however you want. I don't need need to explain it. From 1933 to 1945, Nazi Germany carried out a campaign to cleanse German society of individuals viewed as biological threats to the nation's health. The Nazis, America, would be in so much trouble. (laughs) We're all fucking fat. (laughs) Fat got moles. Every person I know has a skin tag. The Nazis enlisted the help of physicians and medically trained geneticists, psychiatrists, and anthropologists to develop racial health policies. These policies begin with the mass sterilization, uh, sterilization in the glossary. Um, I'm sorry. These policies begin with mass sterilization. The pool of subjects for human experimentation was made up of prisoners held in concentration camps. We're all familiar with concentration camps. Mm -hmm. If you're not, the concentration camps were prisoners. Like, they were just giant prisons where uh, Nazi Germany would round up millions of people of Jewish faith. And it wasn't just Jewish people that were placed in concentration camps. They placed a lot of people that weren't Jewish in concentration camps as well. Prisoners of war. But they were uh, camps where there was literal extermination, euthanasia, torture. You had practical genocide. The fucking worst, most disgusting acts that a human could commit uh, against another human. That's what was going on at these concentration camps. There was a 60-40 split in favor of men and Jewish people made up 30% of all test subjects when it came to the uh, Nazi human experimentations. The majority of the subjects were underfed, which would seriously impact any findings that that could have possibly been gleaned from the torture these people were submitted to. Experiments focusing on hypothermia, gangrene, or blood clotting would not have produced the same results compared to someone at a healthy weight, and I completely understand that. Subjects used for neuroscience experiments were mostly of German and Austrian descent, and they were usually much younger than people that were experimented on in other fields. Uh, Mengele, I think, yeah, Mengele, focused on twins and little people. (laughs) Mengele Mengele fucking hated midgets. Why (laughs) twins, though? That's so fucking weird. Listen, man, this guy would, he would... They called him the angel of death. Yeah. He thought midgets. <laughs> <laughs> he were there. They were untouchable. Like you couldn't fuck with midgets. Look up pictures of concentration camps. Mm-hmm. What do you see? A bunch of skinny people. What do you don't see? A bunch of midgets. <laughs> uh, Mangala thought the midgets were like the holy grail. Hands off the midgets. But twins, he's just like, oh, my God, I can't wait to get my hands on these fuckers. He would straight fuck a twin up right now. He'd cut its brain out and just they he was awful to twins. Weird. And they never everyone people processing like the SS officers. 
uh, the guards, these concentration camps, processing people through anytime they were twins, they knew that they were going straight to the laboratory, straight to Mengele, where he could get his hands on them and start to run these human ex- experimentations on them. Um, a specific fl- family of little people was designated non-expendable by Mengele and allowed uh, they were allowed to wear non-prisoner clothing. Oh, God. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. I heard my I voice for a second. Yeah. <laughs> Is everything okay over there? Yeah. Okay. I was just going to put it on the computer because my uh, phone's getting low, but let okay. me turn the volume off first, and then I'll do that. Uh, Joseph Mengele, he, let's talk about him for just a second. Let's do it. We've said it twice now. He was the angel of death. He re- received his Ph.D. in physical anthropology in 1935 when he was 24 years old. Not, there's not a lot uh, about him growing up or kind of much information about what caused him to be such a fucking raging psycho and a <laughs> fucked up scientist. It just kind of it kind of developed while he was an adult and, and, and moved through the, the Nazi medical system, I guess we'll call it. His ultimate goal was to use the information from his experiments as a way to attain a university position. He was the one who determined what prisoners would be sent from ex- uh, what prisoners would be sent for execution or forced labor in Auschwitz, and he headed up the human experiments performed at the camp. So, while he's walking through all of these people, these concentration camps, people coming in, and he he's um, they have him lined up in this Joseph Mengele. Uh, the doctor, Doctor Mengele, mm-hmm. he would um, he would walk around the people and just by looking at them, he would say, "Live or die." It, 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 he would make the decision in an instant to say that person looks like they could work, that person looks like they would be good for an experiment. Someone that maybe had a little bit of a maybe seemed s- slow, or maybe they seem like uh, what they would call an idiot. They would he just say. Ex- exterminate them and they would they would seriously just fucking kill these people but um a lot of the people that have been interviewed over the years said when he would uh walk around just kind of eyeballing everybody that he would whistle like show tunes and stuff he just had this weird demeanor and he was and he would whistle but then there's another side of it a lot of uh, there's a lot of kids that were test experiments that he treated very well and they would ask they would actually call him uncle mingala and they always look forward to seeing him, but then as soon as they got to a certain age, he would just, you know, they were no longer of any use to him, and he would he would kill them, or they would be put out to to work and essentially work until they die. They were being served, they were just being served, uh, you know, leaves of cabbage and water. That's what they lived off is dirty oh, water God. and um, uh, cabbage. <laughs> I love cabbage, but not like that, dude. <laughs> yeah, I definitely would have been sent to die after bitching about all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, can I get like a uh, Snickers or something? When do they bring the McRib back around here? <laughs> I need the McRib. <laughs> Mangala had two main focuses for his experiments. The first uh, was continuing the research he had been performing on twins with another fellow scientist. He believed that through experimenting on twins, he would find a way of spreading the Aryan gene faster. Yeah, okay. Any twins that arrived at Auschwitz were to be sent to his research area immediately. And they are given special treatment from the other prisoners. They are allowed to wear their own clothes and fed a better diet than the average Holocaust victim. This did not mean that their lives would be any easier, however. Twins, unfortunate enough to end up under Mengele, had extreme amounts of blood taken regularly to the point where they would fucking pass out, wake up, and immediately have more blood taken from them. shit. If an experiment resulted in the death of one twin... The other twin would be killed immediately, so Mangla could dissect them both at the same time during an autopsy. Damn. Uh, Ava Moses, a survivor of Mangla's twins experiment, said she witnessed two gypsy twins who had been sewn together to create artificial Siamese twins. Holy shit. Uh, Quote, this is what she said, the twins screamed day and night until gangrene set in. And after three days, the twins died. Uh, so these were fucking wow. Uh, these were two. These were twin babies, twin children that were born not conjoined. And this do- uh, Dr. Mengele conjoined them, cut them up, joined, tried to put. I, I believe he tried to conjoin them at the spine. 
is where he tried to uh, conjoin them at the hip and the spine. So he cut them up and sewed them together. Uh, and none of this was ever done with any type of anesthesia. So these kids are just, these babies, Fuck, these kids dude. are just going through absolute uh, torturous hell with this stuff happening to them. And I guess we probably should have said at the beginning of this episode, hey, this one's a little fucked up. <laughs> hey, yeah, if, if you could, if you could have taken that, gotten that from the title, then uh, yeah. But some people like that, man. The more fucked up, the better. There's a lot of murders that we've never covered. Yeah, a lot of serious, just because it's so fucking awful. Yeah, but yeah, I think some people just get off on that. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there is. Yeah, a lot of people like the depravity and really extreme nature of what humans are capable of doing. Yeah, which, it, which I, I get. And there's even nastier people that like feet, <laughs> which is really fucking gross. <laughs> Mingla's other focus was on people with dwarfism. That's such a funny word. Dwarfism? Yeah, yep. dwarfism. He believed, <laughs> which, um, that's so bad of me. I'm going to issue myself a fine for this. <laughs> he believed he could remove certain features from the gene pool that the Nazis had deemed undesirable. Their blood was drawn in the same brutal method as the twin uh, research subjects. X-rays were regularly performed with no protective equipment. Healthy teeth were extracted, eyelashes were plucked, <laughs> God damn. and a type of water torture was performed where their ears were kept full of water. Oh, hell no. Some of the victims were even forced to procreate with gypsy women to try and find the percentage of children that would have dwarfism. <laughs> I mean, if I had to be a midget and they said, you know, you've been, you've been sentenced to the wing where you just have sex and make babies. Just fuck gypsies. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably be like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. So let's talk about the uh, the twin experiments for just a second. Okay. Experiments on twin children in the concentration cramps. Uh, cramps. <laughs> yeah, I got cramps reading this <laughs> fucking research. Uh, concentration camps were created to show the similarities and differences in the genetics of twins, as well as to see if the human body can be unnaturally manipulated. Yeah. <coughs> The central leader was Joseph Mangala. Like we said, he performed these studies from 1943 to 1944 on nearly 1,500 sets of imprisoned twins at Auschwitz. Fuck. About 200 individuals survived these studies. The twins were arranged by age, sex, and kept in the barracks between experiments, which ranged from injection of different dyes into their eyes. So uh, that was one of the... One of the big ones they touched on, he would take a syringe with, uh, so he would have twins with brown eyes, and he would take a, a syringe and fill it full of blue dye, and he would sh- uh, shove the syringe into their eyeballs oh, God. and inject their eyeballs with the dye of the color that uh, he intended to make their eye color. So I don't like that. If he wanted to turn their eyes blue, which is what they, you know, uh, naturally, <laughs> that's what they gravitated towards. They take a syringe needle and shove it into their eyeballs, and then fill their uh, fill their eyeballs completely full of Oof. of the dye. I'm not a fan of needles going into eyeballs. That's Oof. I'm not a fan of of any of this. I'm I'm a big fan of getting my schlong sucked on. <laughs> We're not gonna be talking about that. They're really making it seem like that I am a fan of them. I'm not a stuff. fan. I, <laughs> I'm really not a fan of any of it, but I'm that a, fucking sucks. I'm a fan of Golden Corral. None of these people were eating good. That's true. Yeah. I guess the only thing I could probably say I enjoy here is they're exceptionally good to the dwarves. <laughs> I guess and there's that, a silver lining. That's me. I'm nice to the dwarves as well. Yeah. I wonder if we have any dwarves that listen to the show. Or what do you call uh, uh, And I'm not trying to be, I'm really not trying to be an asshole here. Yeah. But a person of smaller stature, we, we would traditionally call, uh, you would use the, the midget word, which I don't necessarily, if I met someone that was, not my size smaller yeah i wouldn't say uh, are you a fucking midget that's not sure <laughs> i wouldn't ask I that mean, question obviously it would be pretty self-explanatory <laughs> that they were <laughs> you wouldn't really have to ask that but i mean <laughs> but what's the um i guess i don't even need to ask that because i think they, they they say they have dwarfism so i mean i don't i don't know if they use little person anymore I don't but here's the kind of person i am i think that sounds more derogatory than the m word but it does if I was hanging out with someone like that, there would person. never be 
there would never be a need for me to say, are you a midget or are right. you a little person? Yeah. We're just chilling, dude. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm, I, mean, I just love having friends. I love meeting new people. So there would never be a, just for, and if I was hanging out with someone who whose race I didn't know what their race were, there would be, uh, I would, I would never have to say, are you Hispanic or are you, are you a white <laughs> yeah. person? What kind of brown are you? <laughs> yeah, I would just, I would never need to know the answer to that question. It just doesn't matter to me, which I'd say that's a pretty good trait for anybody to have. Just yeah. love people for who they are. There's that, there's that one TikTok where the person <laughs> where it was said something it was like this, uh, there's this, this brown skin lady and she said, someone asked you, someone asked her, or so are you 7-Eleven Brown or 9-Eleven Brown? Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, God damn, Jesus dude. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's awful, man. Oh. Yeah, so you, 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 that's something you just don't really ask. If someone wants to bring it up and go for it, but I don't yeah. really give a shit. I'm a good person. <laughs> I'm deep going, in, what type of white are you? <laughs> deep, in, deep in our hearts, we're good people. <clears throat> and after they are done injecting dye into the twins' eyeballs... Um, they would also, they would sew the twins together and attempt to create conjoined twins. Um, have you ever seen conjoined twins in real life? In, in real life? In real life. Yeah. Not like on TV. I've seen them on TV, but like, listen, dude, when I was a younger, I was pretty obsessed with those blonde haired ones that were. Yeah. Conjoined. Yeah. Oh, uglier than sin. But sure. I was just like. I wonder what it was like. <laughs> I wonder what it would be like. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it would stink. Because, you know, if me and you were taking a shower together, we'd be like, just, let's just get in here and get wet and get out of here. Mm -hmm. Well, I, 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 If we were just, like, forced to, like, hold each other while we took a shower, I mean, that would be fucking hot and erotic. But right. I wouldn't be like, hey, dude, is it cool if I scrub my fucking balls for, like, five minutes <laughs> real quick? So... <laughs> As a conjoined twin, mm -hmm. do you argue over like watching your pussy or? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's this um, there's a conjoined twin on um TikTok, and I watch their, her and her sisters videos all the time, and they they're, they're, they talk about shit like that. And it's pretty funny. Really? Yeah, and there's that other oh. one there where it's like the two older dudes, um, they're pretty famous. I think the one's gay and the other one's not, but they share an <laughs> ass. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that before. Yeah. How unfortunate would that be, dude? dude? One's gay and one's not, but they have the same butthole. <laughs> That's so unfair. <laughs> uh, not tonight. <laughs> Do the, That's it. Yeah, is that rape? Yeah, but then, how does that work? So, I would imagine they... Yeah, I, I, I don't know. So, like, the non-gay one... <laughs> I mean, he's gay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's, he's not. The, he's not gay by choice, but he's <laughs> if you know they're at the bar hooking up with somebody, and the the gay twins like we're going, we're taking this dude back to the house, uh -huh. and then the like the the non gay ones like no, we're not because I'm gonna shit myself right now. <laughs> That's true. It's yeah, just like yeah. Shit, you. how would you either either they're they're never getting laid, uh -huh. or they're always getting fucked, and somebody's <laughs> miserable. Yeah, I, I want to get eaten out by a fucking conjoined <laughs> twin too. I think that'd be so much fun. <laughs> if you're a conjoined twin, send us an email at ohiopodcast at gmail dot com. Or if you know one, yeah, give us an interview with them. Or if you're an orphan, <laughs> talk to one of those also. It's kind of sad. That's <laughs> really sad. There's a lot of that sad orphanage shit in here. I was reading about the, uh, I was reading about the, mo so I was looking at the, like bad human experimentation stuff, mm -hmm. and I looked up a one called the Monster Study, and they would take these kids, uh, they would go to an orphanage, and they would tell these kids, uh, I think they would tell them if they talked that there was a monster that was going to kill them. But well, these kids are already orphans. Yeah. They didn't have families. So then the people they trusted in the, at the orphanage would come to them and say, um, if, you, if you talk, a monster's going to kill you. And, the, and they were dead serious about them. And they would, like, they would try and monitor their levels of stress and see how long the... Um, Damn, that's fucking traumatizing. You're is. traumatizing people who are probably already traumatized in some way, shape, or form. Let's see, yeah. so I'm definitely oh, not good on their oh, mental no, health. A, the stuttering... Monster study. So, okay, some of these kids study. Uh, some of these kids stuttered, and they said the only way this monster won't kill you is if 
when the words come out of your mouth, you don't stutter. So the only way you can talk is if you know without a shadow of a doubt that you're not going to stutter. So then all of a sudden, these stuttering kids <laughs> fuck, would just stop talking because they thought this fucking thing, this monster was going to kill them. So they just they wouldn't talk because they couldn't talk <laughs> without stu- 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 stuttering. The, so it, it fixed their stutter? No, they oh, just okay. became fucking recluses. <laughs> they just they didn't, became mutes? They're just like, ah. You know, they wouldn't talk to anybody. They just hide in the shadows and become recluses or hermits and shit. <laughs> I was to say, wait, so if it worked, <laughs> yeah, it's just, technically not. It's not that bad. Not that bad. No, dude, it's bad. No, that's awful. Yeah. Mm, I don't like that one either. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Okay, let's move on to the next uh, human experiment. Uh, the bone, muscle, and nerve transplantation experiments going on at the uh, concentration camps. Uh, a lot of these are just short snippets, but from about September 1942 until about December of 1943, experiments were conducted at Ravensbrück uh, concentration camp for the benefit of the German armed forces to study bone, muscle, and nerve regeneration, uh, regeneration and bone transplantation from one person to another. Sections of bones, muscles, and nerves were removed from the subjects without any anesthesia as a result of these operations, many victims suffered an intense agony, mutil- uh, mutilation, and permanent disability. And uh, some of the people that kind of gave their firsthand accounts of this said there were, there you would see people walking around like missing arms and legs and shit. Mm-hmm. But then you would go to certain parts of the camp and there would be piles of body parts. Oh, shit. Just like fingers, hands, arms, legs, toes. From where they would just fucking lob this stuff off of people. They would cut it off and they would just toss it in the pile. And then the person just like, they're like, all right, you're all done. We're going to let you go for a couple of days and see what happens to, uh, to see if we can regenerate your arm. See if we can, they would, so they would cut people open. They would cut like a person's foot open, mm-hmm. cut their calf open and just, and just take a, a medical knife and completely sever all their tendons. Just holy just shit. Stab them and just take a swipe down and cut every muscle, tendon, fiber, everything inside their arms and legs. Oh god. And then they would sew it up, let it go for a day, or they would slice it all up and they would grab a tendon, grab something from another part of the body and then put it where they destroyed everything and see if they could, like, regenerate the muscle or regenerate the tendon or make a transplant happen. It makes it makes you wonder, like, in them, um, this is in no way, shape, or form me saying, you know, giving any justification to any of this, but it also it, it makes you wonder how much of this uh, crazy torture in the name of science that they were doing, how much we know now because of the From things it? that were done, yeah. You know, I talk about that a little bit later in the research. What, but I feel like it, it can't. It, it's there's probably some stuff that we learned, but not what they thought that they were doing some groundbreaking shit here. Well, man, you, but that's the thing is, I think they did do some. They did learn some groundbreaking stuff. Yeah. But flash forward to um, decades later, and a lot of these medical journals and stuff. They're just like you know. I'm, we're not. We're not gonna. We're not gonna cite this. We're not gonna use the information for from these sure. studies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then whenever they, um, or they essentially kicked in the doors in these concentration camps and shut them down when mm-hmm. you know, when the war came to an end, a lot of these guys escaped and they took their work with them. They took their. They took all the information that they had learned. They took it with them. And, and Joseph uh, Mangala was the by far and away the most proven scientist through all yeah. this that 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 had learned the most <clears throat> infor- most amount of information he took all of his work with him whenever he escaped well then i think we learned from and we've talked about project paperclip before that a lot of the high end doctors and scientists were captured by us we put them to work and we yeah we employed them yeah man we just they kind of just scrubbed the fact that they were nazi doctors or worked for the third reich or and then <laughs> it makes you it makes you wonder, dude. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's it definitely happened. It's a foul game. Yeah, it's I'll crazy. And another experiment. This is um, they performed these in in Poland. Experiments were conducted. Uh, this is in 1942. The the head injury experiments. There was a small building where they conducted these um, 
these experiments. It was behind a private home occupied by a known Nazi SD security officer in which a young boy of 11 or 12 was strapped to a chair so he could not move. Above him was a mechanic hammer apparatus that would every few seconds come down and smack him in the skull. The boy was driven insane from the torture, but they were trying to replicate head injuries in the battlefield. A lot of this was centered around injuries that the German soldiers were suffering in the battlefield. So they would replicate these bomb injuries, these uh, head injuries, bullet wound injuries, gashes, cuts. They're essentially trying to replicate all this stuff. And they would just inflict it on these, uh, on these poor prisoners in the concentration camps. But yeah, this young boy, the, a lot of people talked about this story. I, there was this young boy and he would just literally get beat with a hammer all day. Like it wasn't, <sighs> It wasn't enough to hurt hurt him, mm-hmm. but it was enough to eventually drive him insane, and, and, and you know, it eventually killed him. God, oh, uh, I think I kind of ad libbed on this one, so I'll, uh, yeah, I'm, I'll take this and I'll start handing some of these off to you. Okay, this one's a little weird. This is one of the biggest experiments. That they can uh, they conducted during the entire the entire war in 1941 the Luftwaffe the Luftwaffe <laughs> or the Luftwaffe it's my favorite dish at Waffle House <laughs> give me that Luftwaffe <laughs> <laughs> hey man I used to work security at uh, Waffle House in the middle of the night yeah there was this crazy bastard that come in every night and he'd get a waffle and he'd cover it in Heinz 57 yeah, fuck. and he would eat it like it was the last piece of vagina in the entire world. He would just, he had to have been a prison <laughs> former inmate. He would eat. No, he was a fucking nerdler. He just, he, <laughs> oh, okay. He was a big time nerd, but he would tear into this waffle syrup. Heinz 57. Oh God. Heinz 57 gets slept on. That's a good sauce. It is. Yeah. And then also, um, I went to Arby's last night, the oh, night God, before. Why? It was fucking disgusting. I took <laughs> I took two bites of my sandwich, uh-huh. and I don't ever throw away food. Yeah. Never throw away Same. food. I threw it away, dude. Really? What'd you get? I got a fucking or a beef and cheddar. Just a beef and cheddar? How yeah, do you man. mess that up after generations of perfecting? Yeah, it's like the only sandwich s- keeping them in business. And it was awful. The bread was... Hard as my like hard as a wedding dick, dude. It was hard <laughs> shit. The uh, the roast beef was slimy. Ugh. The cheddar tasted like uh, it just tasted like wa- water. There was no taste to it, and the and it pisses me off. I haven't gone to Arby's in a long time, but every time you go to Arby's, they you say, "Can I have Arby sauce?" They'll give you one fucking packet. Yeah, they will fuck you up. They'll <clears> give <throat> you one packet, and they'll stare you stare you right in the eye. And cuss you out if you ask for more than one packet. That shit pisses me off. We went to we went to Lee's uh, last week, and we got this uh, the family plan uh, the family dinner. It was like th- I think it's like thirty pieces of chicken. They gave us four fucking sauces. We asked for more. They gave us two more. Yeah, <laughs> it's like bitch. <laughs> I don't mind to pay. Like, I, I, no, like exactly. Yeah. Take me. Let, let's edge together real quick. You know. Uh, take take me to the point. Where yeah. uh, I have to, uh, until I have to start paying. And I was at Chipotle once, and the guy, uh, the guy in front of me, was like, "Give me chicken, pinto beans," and they got the cheese. And he's like, "I want cheese. I want extra cheese." They start. Mm-hmm. Putting, they put a little. So what they do? Um, he w- he was smart. He said, "Give me cheese." They put the cheese on. He's like, "I want extra cheese." So then they put like a little tiny yeah. piece. Typical. And then if you, b- before you ask for the extra cheese, if you say, I want extra cheese, they'll give you two half handfuls. So then you really have the same amount of cheese. Mm-hmm. This guy looked, looked the worker dead in the face and he said, I want you to put, I want you to keep putting cheese on this until your manager has to intervene. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fucking good, dude. <laughs> so, uh, until your manager intervenes. Give me as much cheese as you're legally allowed to give me. <laughs> or I have to start buying cheese. <laughs> That's so fucking smart. And this kid was just like, <laughs> he started piling the cheese on. And that dude just like, 
kept didn't break his stare. Just kept on staring, staring at this kid. Yeah, and shaking his head, just like cheese that motherfucker dude, up. Chipotle's cheese fucks hard. Dude. It's yeah, so good. that's really good cheese. And if that, I think that I, white rice fucks too. That's my favorite thing. If there. um, if I had to get cheese from one restaurant, that's mm. that Chipotle cheese. That's the shit, man. Yeah, it's good. But it's such an inconsistent product. Dude. It really is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you go to one Chipotle and you're just like. How am I ever going to finish this burrito? Yeah. And then you go to the next one, you're like, I got a child-sized burrito, mm-hmm. and they didn't put any cheese on it. The one by my house is awful. They skimp you on everything, and it takes fucking forever to get anything done because they move yeah. so slow. The one on Miller Lane, man, here lately, every time I go there, they fucking hook me up. Too many bad experiences there. Yeah. I got this one down the street. They do okay. Yeah. That one's kind of That one's kind of like the one at my... Brown used to be the best one, but... Oh, Brown was a shit, dude. Yeah, back in high school. Whew, that was the original, too. OG, yep. It was good stuff. All right, so these these uh, hypothermia... We talk about food way too much, <laughs> man. <laughs> Make people hungry, man. It's all right. Poor horny. Christmas tree fucking Debbies or little Debras. I'll do. Christmas tree Debras are out. We bought the family size box last night. That fucker's like this thick. Why are they so good? I don't know, man. I don't know. Criminal. It, yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, they so they conduct these experiments with the intent of discovering means to prevent and treat hypothermia. They were finding out that a lot of their soldiers were suffering from hypothermia on the battlefield, and they were not prepared for it. They were losing a lot, a lot of uh, the the I guess the foothold they had there in in Europe because they were losing these battles because they just couldn't stay warm on the battlefield. One study, dude, these hypothermia fucking experiments, these are fucking awful, dude. I could assume. One study forced subjects to endure a tank of ice water for up to five hours. Another study placed prisoners naked in the open air for several hours with temperatures as low as 21 degrees. Besides, (laughs) dude, just fucking butthole naked in 21 degrees. That's (laughs) awful. Besides studying the physical effects of cold exposure, the experimenters also assessed different methods of rewarming the survivors. So not only were they inflicting serious damage upon these people by subjecting them to the freezing cold frigid temperatures, but then the means they would to take to warm them back up would oftentimes put them into shock uh, or yeah. kill them. The freezing uh, hypothermia experiments were conducted for the Nazi high command to simulate the conditions the armies suffered on the eastern front as the German forces were ill-prepared for the cold weather they encountered. Many experiments were conducted on captured Russian troops. The Nazis wondered whether their genetics gave them superior resistance to cold. God. The prince, uh, yes, Russia, we don't like the cold, but it doesn't bother us. <laughs> we get much more done when it's warm, but we will face the cold with no problem. And they thought that, um, and that's kind of how the, the Nazis thought. They said, well, fuck, the, 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 the Russians, they, we can't be testing this shit on them because they're already like, they're just cold. They're just always cold, and they know how to handle it. And Russians are just tough bastards to begin with. The principal locales were... Uh, Dachau, I believe, I think I'm saying that right. Uh, I looked it up earlier. Let's see. the. I'm, I'm going to look up the pronunciation on this real quick because it's in here a lot, and I don't want to fuck it up. Dachau. 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 Dachau, that's it. Dachau. Like, Dachau is, we're milking Dachau. <laughs> <laughs> the principal locales were Dachau and Auschwitz. Dr. Sigmund Roschker, an SS doctor based out of Dachau, reported uh, directly to Heinrich Himmler of the SS and publicized the results of his freezing experiments at the 1942 medical conference entitled Medical Problems Arising from Sea and Winter. Approximately 100 people are reported to have died as a result of these experiments. One of the... uh, Now let's go into, like, the warming, warming people back up so they they would... Put them butt naked out in 21 degrees, and then they would warm them back up. So some of these ways they would use to warm them back up would be a sun lamp. The victims were placed under sun lamps, which were so hot that they would burn their skin. One young uh, homosexual victim was, and I'll 
talk to you about why the homosexuality is important. Okay. Uh, the, was repeatedly cooled to unconsciousness, then revived with lamps until he was pouring sweat. He died one evening after several test sessions. And the homosexual detainees in concentration camps not only faced extreme cruel torture from the Nazi soldiers, but also were looked down upon by other detainees. Damn. They would oftentimes uh, boil off their testicles using water. Holy shit. They would mutilate their genitals. They would insert sharp metal and wooden objects into their anal orifices as well. And they'd also uh, beat them to death. That was mostly the, the, the outcome for someone that was found to be a homosexual Oof. in the concentration camps. They would beat them to the death, uh, but they would also boil their testicles off. Yeah, damn. That sounds so fucking hot, dude. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> dude, it's so fucking bad. How do you boil somebody's testicles uh, off? Uh, you're baking my potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> my fucking nuggets. Fuck! <laughs> my hard-boiled eggs. Oh, dude, I, I know how I would just... I can just see my fat ass hanging there with my arms above my head. Dude, I couldn't fucking imagine how bad that sucked. And they're just about to boil my nuts off. <laughs> as soon as they started to touch me, I'd be like, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming! And they would just be like, no. <laughs> no nine, nine, nine! Nine! And they stick the hot poker up your asshole. I'm fucking coming, Fuck! <laughs> I'd sound like that fucking dude getting his arm ripped off by the tiger. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit, fuck. <laughs> we got so much shit for that. No. That's mostly me, though. Yeah, I know. It was bad. That's what I would be doing, though. <laughs> oh, fuck me. You got you to gotta get out of there, man. You got to bail out. Also, um, so the not only was it, it didn't. It didn't pay to be Jewish. It didn't pay to be gay either. So yeah. you've heard of you've heard of uh, gay for pay. It didn't pay to be gay at Auschwitz. Nah, nah for sure. I'd my ass be gay for a day, and I'd be going back. Like I'm not fucking gay anymore. N yeah. They boiled that guy's asshole and balls off. Ooh, man. Ooh, that's rough. Stinky. Imagine how bad your asshole stunk <laughs> after it got put in boiling water. Just fucking shit all over yourself. Uh, for sure. Hot. Smell fucking awful. <laughs> You boys want to see a smoke ring? It smells like a bag of boiled asses in here. <laughs> Tell me what it smelled like when I walked into the studio earlier. <laughs> yeah, it smelled like a fucking truck tire again. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that bad, but... The, uh, they also do internal irrigation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That sounds fucking hot, too. <laughs> the frozen victim would have water heated to a near blistering temperature, forcibly irrigated into their stomach, bladder, and intestines. All victims from uh, the internal irrigation experiments they all appear Ooh. to have died from the treatment 100 percent mortality rate right there they would also do uh, hot baths the victim was placed in warm water and the temperature was slowly increased this method proved to be the best many victims died due to the shock if they were warmed up too quickly there was also one I'm thing a, that i'm not a fan of baths me personally dude i haven't taken one in fucking 100 years yeah we went to um I hurt my back like last year and I had to take like a really like I put like boiling hot water pretty much in the tub and laid down in it and I just felt weird because my balls were just sitting there floating <laughs> at the top of the you, water you your balls are floating. <laughs> like perfectly buoyant we went to uh on our anniversary last year we went to <laughs> Pigeon Forge Margaritaville yeah and we I got us a room with a jacuzzi, jacuzzi tubs yeah and uh she was asleep and I filled it up because I was when she got up I was gonna be like let's get the tub but um, I filled it up, and then she's like, oh, she was kind of drunk. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, all right, I'm getting in the fucking tub. So I hopped in the tub. <laughs> I'm a big dude, man. And I don't know how to take – I know when I put my kids in the bath. Yeah. They don't, they don't fucking displace the water like a Titanic <laughs> getting dropped in the harbor. Did you fill it all the way up to the top? I fill it like two <laughs> inches from the top. Yeah, you can't do that, man. And I slid in there like a dead slug, and this fucking water rushed over the top. Like it looked like a third floor of the Titanic, dude. It was there was water going everywhere. Like when you accidentally clog the toilet, you're praying it doesn't go up over the fucking rim. 
So, yeah, I, I displace like fucking 6,000 cubic gallons of water or some shit like that onto that floor. And then she woke up and she's like, what the fuck happened? I was like, I think we got a bad pipe or something in there. I was blaming it on the plumbing and shit. She's like, why is there water on the carpet? And like it went all the way from the bathroom on the carpet out the fucking. Oh, man, that's rough. There's water next to our suitcase and shit. <laughs> We're going to need some more towels. <laughs> And I'm just fucking sitting there mad at my dick, looking down at myself, just thinking, just naked, wet, and angry. What have I done? My legs are all red because the water is so hot. <laughs> Dude, the worst, and I I remember this because <laughs> this is one of the worst feelings in the world. I don't know if you've ever been in the shower and just like something disrupts you to where you have to get out of the shower. Yeah, but there's nothing worse than getting into the shower and then getting out. And still stinking after having all that water on you. Kind of like, I don't know if you ever experienced this. Yeah, no, I understand. But then also sometimes I'll take a shower and I'll forget to wash my hair. Okay. Flash forward, you know, an hour or two and I'm like, I'll see my hair in the mirror. I'm like, that's greasy. And I'm like, fuck, I forgot to wash my hair. Mm -hmm. And that is the nastiest feeling that I think I've ever felt. Yeah. Is to have got in the shower. This is third world problems right here. Yeah. You're getting FaceTime again uh, over there. Yep, yeah, just quit though. But All right. um, my thing is like I I hate getting in the shower and realizing when I'm in the shower that I need to shit. That's <laughs> that. There's nothing worse than sitting down the toilet to take a shit when you're like all soaped up and or just yeah, wet. Makes your ass itchy. I don't yeah, know. and you can't even wipe right because everything fuck. fucking sticks to your it's ass. Fucking gross. Yeah, it's rough. You need like I an just, SOS pad to scrub your ass. I just shit in the shower and waffle <laughs> stomp it, dude. That's, yeah, we're the biggest. Uh, Give it a little heave ho. <laughs> <laughs> Grab it, throw it out in the yard. <laughs> like a dead bird. Throw it at the neighbor's dog. Yeah, eat that. <laughs> Whatever you gotta do. Um, also, a big, a big uh, advocate of this was Heimrich Himmler. He suggested to Doctor Rasker that uh, uh, Rosker that he try to use women to warm the frozen men. He suggested that the victim, uh, the victim, and a woman copulate. Okay, oh. this perverted experiment occurred with some success. However, it was not as successful as the uh, gradual warming of the bath water. So, hmm. you know, get them big old fucking titties on your head. <laughs> That'll warm you right up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to warm her cheeks up later. <laughs> She's listening. She's not listening. No, not at all. She fucking hates this <laughs> podcast. Every fiber of her being. I get it. Yeah. All right, tell about the malaria experiment. Oh, yeah, I love malaria. Uh, so from, from about February 1942 to about April of 1945, this is a long one. Experiments were conducted at the. Well, how do you say? It? How was that? The Chow, the Chow, the Cow, the Cow. There you go. <laughs> That's right, milk and the Cow. There you go. Uh, they were conducted at the the Cow concentration camp in order to investigate immunization for the treatment of malaria. Healthy inmates were infected by mosquitoes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> thank you. I like how its lips move too. I ne I never noticed that before. Duck cow. Um, yeah, they were infected by mosquitoes or by injections of ex extracts of the mucous glands of female mosquitoes. After contracting the disease, the subjects were treated with various drugs to test their relative efficiency. Over one thousand people were used in these experiments, and more than half died as a result. Hell yeah, dude! What like? For someone who thinks that God is all knowing and all willing and created everything for a purpose, what the fuck is a mosquito's purpose? Yeah, dude, there's no purpose of a mosquito. Or like a wasp. Like they don't even fucking pollinate. Like they just they're just pissed off bees. He's mad. Yeah. You know what? Or a platypus. What the fuck does that do? Someone the other day said something about um they're oh, I wasn't I was sick last week. And someone me said, uh I'll pray for you. I said, <laughs> don't waste your fucking breath. And they got they got upset and wanted to debate. And I said, look, if you're looking to see me get emotional about this, I'm not because I'm just not going to argue about it. You feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. I still love you regardless. Sure. It's just I don't need you to pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really fucking don't. <laughs> Why? Um, I hope that God is real and I hope that all that stuff like. Yeah what they say is heaven and hell right now in my life i'm just not buying it yeah but pray you know, into one hand shit in the other and see which fills up faster there right? was a point in my life that i was sold out for god mm -hmm. you know i went to church fat camp almost fucking died there a couple times 
<laughs> Haven't ate a vegetable since. Well, why would God? Why would God send me to fat camp if He loves me so much? <laughs> and, um, God, those are some of the best cigarettes I ever smoked, though. I will say that. <laughs> My uh, we went to the Bengals game yesterday, and I got pretty drunk. Mm-hmm. And my brother was smoking. My brother smokes like two, He's... two to three packs a day, probably. Yeah. Uh, but I don't smoke. He turned his back for a second. I was really drunk, and I grabbed one of his cigarettes and I had it in my mouth, and I was just standing there with a cigarette hanging out of my mouth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he got so upset because <laughs> he was drunk too. He's like. Start smoking, man. <laughs> I'm like, I'm fine. I'm just here. Oh. Out my mouth. He was upset because he didn't want you to smoke. I figured he was yeah, just pissed because no. you like ruined one of his cigarettes or something. No, he's uh, he's my big bubby, so he doesn't want to see me do bad shit. He's like, I don't want to fucking be the one that causes all these bad habits. Oh, that's, that's kind of sweet. Take that fucking thing out of your mouth. <laughs> We're wa- everyone's walking like hoo day hoo, and we're just standing there fighting over a cigarette in my mouth. <laughs> They're both just crying, yeah. like holding each other. <laughs> Show the fuck up, I love you, man. <laughs> and then he sobered up a little bit, and I stayed drunk, and I kept on screaming, "There's only enough room for one cat in the jungle today." <laughs> and he kept on telling me to shut up, quit saying that. Uh-huh. It was embarrassing that if I said it one more time, he was leaving. <laughs> and that's when I was like, well, "Let's fucking wrestle." And uh, we did a little body to body contact for a little bit. Yeah. We had a good time, man. That sounds fun, man. Had a really good time. Yeah, it sounds hot. How about the uh, amputation and transplant experiment? Scientists at the Ravensbrück concentration camp, they would cut off limbs of prisoners, again, without anesthesia, to see if those limbs could readily transplant it onto others, presumably hoping to provide wounded Nazi soldiers with Damn. replacement <clears throat> appendages. The experiments were unsuccessful so they were taking yeah, frankensteining them they were taking arms off of one guy and they were uh attached trying to attach them to another person's arm well, they're putting like dwarf arms on normal sized people <laughs> no, but i did read that they were taking like they'd amputate a, a, a leg at the knee and they would try and install it at the elbow of the arm so they'd try and you know make like a Oh, dude, if I had a foot for a hand, I would be so pissed. <laughs> well, if you had a fucking foot for uh, for arms and, you know, your feet still stunk like you're in work boots all day. <laughs> your feet just fucking stunk. Oh, man. I'd be I'd be salty. That'd be awful, dude. Yeah. <clears throat> I'd be pretty mad. I don't... What the dude. fuck are you going to do with a foot for a hand? <laughs> Not a fucking thing, I'll tell you that much. I would have a hole surgically put in it and i would let people fuck it for money <laughs> have you seen those fleshlights they're a foot with yeah a, man like a pussy on the bottom of yeah. it i don't know how i feel about those i'd probably give it a try yeah i definitely <laughs> give it a try it's not i didn't say i wouldn't try it that's just like a lot of food there's a lot of food i i will try no i'm not sure. gonna like it but i'll try any food yeah but in terms of a, of a foot fleshlight i don't like it yeah it doesn't turn me on it's not uh it's not Gwen Stefani in 2004. It doesn't turn me on. Sure. It doesn't give me a fucking erection. But, yeah, I would try it. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. Escargo, <laughs> I would try it. Been there. Uh, shit on a shingle. Love it. I would try it. I love the shit part. Mm-hmm. Delicious. Yeah. How about those high altitude studies? Oh, I love high altitude. Uh, <laughs> Nazi SS Dr. Sigmund uh, Rash- Rasher. Let's just say Rasher. 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 Russia uh, devised one of the most murderous experiments. He and members of the Luft Luftwaffe, the, the the Waffle House. Hold on, let's see if we can look up this one too. Luftwaffe. Luftwaffe. That's what I do when I fart. Luft. I fucking do the. Old, <laughs> you loofed it. A Luftwaffe. You loofed and wafted it. People's uh, Luftwaffe. 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 <laughs> That's very German. Luftwaffe. I, I get that. Uh, the Luftwaffe Medical Service placed more than 200 inmates of the Dachau concentration camp into the low-pressure chamber one by one to simulate the effects of high altitude on humans, seeking to use the results to save German pilots forced to eject high in the air. Um, 80 subjects died from lack of oxygen and altitude sickness, and the rest were murdered so that autopsies could be performed. It's it's not it's it's a fucking lose lose. Holy yeah, shit! Yeah, for sure. They showed pictures of these guys dying in these low pe- pressure chambers. Yeah, they look fucking tortured, dude. They look miserable. <laughs> I mean, for uh, I guess you know, I, they're definitely 
Yeah, awful shit, man. But they, yeah. they look bad. Yeah. Um. Let's see here. It is occasion, or I'm sorry. It is rumored that um, roster occasionally dissected inmates' brains while subjects were still alive in order to directly observe high altitudes' um, immediate effects on the organs. In a letter from the April 5th, 1942, between Roscher and Heinrich Himmler, Roscher explains the results of the low-pressure experiment that was performed on people of the Dachau concentration camp in which the victim was suffocated while Roscher and another unnamed doctor took note of his reactions. The person was described as 37 years old and in good health before being murdered. Um, Roscher described the victim's actions as he began to lose oxygen and time changed, I'm sorry, and timed the change in behavior. The 37 year old began to wiggle his head at four minutes. A minute later, Roscher observed that he was suffering from cramps before falling unconscious. Uh, he described how the victim lay unconscious, breathing only three times per minute until he stopped breathing 30 minutes after being deprived of oxygen. Um, the victim turned blue and began foaming at the mouth, and an autopsy followed an hour later. And um, oh, this is still me. No, oh, it was um, not. What? Okay. What a fucking awful way to go. Yeah, that's r- fucking rough, man. That's horrifying. And yeah. they were they were they were doing this to hundreds and thousands of people, man. Um, but you know, when you asked earlier about were they compiling any data of usage? Yeah, I would imagine from the <clears throat> hypothermia studies, they probably got a lot of useful information there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but where they made the most progress, I believe, aside from the hypothermia study, were uh, was the immunization studies, the okay. immunization experiments. At the German concentration camps, uh, pretty much all of them, scientists tested immunization compounds and serums for the prevention and treatment of contagious diseases, including malaria, typhus, tuberculosis, typhoid fever, yellow fever, and infectious hepatitis. Um, But the only way they could test for this shit was to actively give it to people. So the amount of people that were dying from, and look up what it's like to die from yellow fever, what it's like to die from typhoid. The amount of people that were dying from this shit was staggering, but what was even more staggering was the advances they were making with the uh, yeah. with immunizations and what they were learning about actually getting getting shots for people that would keep them from getting this stuff. And then flash forward... Uh, Years later, all these medical professionals are like, yeah, we have the answer of what we need and we have the data, but we're not going to use that data. We got to figure this out on our own. So they would they they had the answers for some of these immunizations <clears throat> years later. But they would just discard them to the wayside because they didn't want to use the research that was, um, you know, publicized by the Nazis and all these human experiments from the concentration camps. What? A fucking pile of shit. Mm-hmm. This is all right. You go ahead and take. <laughs> I'll take jaundice. <laughs> Why not? I think we both have jaundice. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit. Let's see here. So from June 1943 until January 1945, at the concentration camp of uh, Sachsenhausen and uh, Natzweiler experimentation with epidemic jaundice was conducted. The test subjects were injected with the disease in order to discover new inoculations for the condition. These tests were conducted for the benefit of the German armed forces. Most subjects died in the experiments, while others experienced great pain and suffering. Uh, And they also did a lot with mustard gas, where they would actually... um, Mustard gas is nasty shit, man. At various times yeah. between September of 39 and April of 45, many experiments were conducted at uh, Sackenhausen and Notzweiler and other concentration camps to investigate the most effective treatment of wounds caused by mustard gas. Test subjects were deliberately exposed to mustard gas, and so much so that they were getting like burns and blisters all over their skins. Uh, it says here, blister agents, highly reactive chemicals that react with cells and cellular components and cause severe skin, eye, and mu- mucosal pain and irritation, which inflicted severe chemical burns. The victim's wounds were then tested 
to find the most effective treatment for the mustard gas burns. And when I say um, the wounds are tested, they wouldn't really start to test these wounds until they started to stink and get really infected, get gangrene. Mm. That was one of the most common things in the concentration camps from all of these experiments were, uh, was gangrene in their wounds. So Ugh. these wounds would honestly fester. They'd be filled full of maggots. They would stink. Uh, so, and oft, oftentimes they weren't <clears> they, – so they would do a test on somebody where they would, you know, gash their leg open or, or burn the fuck out of them with mustard gas. They would get so caught up with other stuff, doing other people, but by the time they had got back to you to – try and um, whatever see if they could cure you cure you of your ailment you were you were so far into pretty much dying that there was mm. nothing they could do for you. you were you were essentially rotting to death yeah you were you were like you weren't eating you weren't drinking you were just waiting to die and a lot of people died that way I mean, no like not to say that they were gonna try to save your ass anyways no but that was <laughs> Kind of the basis of the experiments was they were trying to get you as bad as they could get you and then figure out a way to resuscitate you or bring you back. Or the intention was, in most cases, let's fuck him up as bad as we can, mm -hmm. let him die from it, and then when he's dead, we'll cut him up and see if we can learn anything during the autopsy, which is just as unfortunate as all of this. Hmm. So then from here, we go to, um, I'm probably definitely going to fucking destroy this word. Hold on, we'll look Sul it up. Sulfonamide? Sulf sulfonamide. Sulfonamide, people I think are, that's what it is. People are probably saying, they're looking up words today. Uh, uh, sulfonamide. Look. Sulfonamide. Hey, look at that, I fucking Sulfonamide. nailed it. Sulfonamide. Sulfonamide. Uh, so from about July 1942 to about September of 1943, experiments to investigate the effectiveness of sulfonamide, a synthetic... Uh, antimicrobial agent were conducted at Ravensbrook. Um, wounds inflicted on the subjects were infected with bacteria such as Streptococcus. Oh, yeah! <laughs> yeah. Nothing better than a stripping cock. Uh, <laughs> Dude, strep throat's the worst. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, Clostridium uh, paraphrin... Clost Clostrum, that's the shit that comes out of your titties before the baby <laughs> starts nursing. <laughs> Perifringens... Um, God, we're fucking stupid. Hey, it's, it's a major causative agent in the gas gangrene. Ooh, fuck. Yeah. And uh, let's see. This cluster the shit they call is tetanus. Yeah, yeah, Tet there you go. Tetani. The agent in tetanus. Um, circulation of blood was interrupted by tying off blood vessels at both ends of the wound to create conditions similar to that of a battlefield wound. Researchers also aggravated the subject's infection by forcing wood shavings and ground glass into their wounds. The infection was treated with uh, sulfonamide and other drugs to determine their effectiveness. Oh, my God. Yeah, like, it, how do you even, like, just think to, to do something like that? Like, Well, those doctors, man, they were, you know, they called uh, Mangala the angel of death. Mm -hmm. They weren't fucking around. But, you know, a lot right. of the stuff we're talking about right here wasn't even pertain, pertaining to him. There were so many doctors... Lots of cooks so in the kitchen. So many scientists. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there weren't... There wasn't any food. <laughs> You're such a piece of shit. You, that's, you know, that's the reason people don't listen anymore, is because stuff like that. This is ASMR now. <laughs> no, it's not. Welcome to Rob's Dungeon. I, I, I work with a guy that, that eats his food so loudly. He mm -hmm. chews with his mouth open. Yeah, and he just tears it up, <laughs> and I, I don't. So I would never just hurt somebody at work. <laughs> but I have just thought about kissing them. Just <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not really. And he'd be like, "Why the fuck you do that?" I'd be like, "Cause you're eating your food so loud." You know, I can't punch anybody or be. But if I just grabbed him and started kissing him, yeah. Right in the mouth. With your, mouth your mouth makes that food sound so... It seems like it tastes so fucking start good. Start making out with it. What if, I have to taste it. <laughs> what, that's, maybe that's a movement that we could start um, 
you know, when people get mad at each other, they fight, they fist fight. What if, what if we just started, like, fuck, like people that we got upset with, we just start fucking making out with them. We just start, like. And they'll show them. Yeah. <laughs> show them real good, won't it? <laughs> just grab their fucking face and start making out with them. <laughs> How about the old uh, seawater experiments? This is Dude. good stuff. From about July of 1944 to about September of 1944. Experiments were conducted at the Dachau concentration camp to study various methods of making seawater drinkable. Okay. Which, if you've ever drank in semen before, <laughs> you'll know that it's much more delicious than seawater. <laughs> if you've ever eaten your own cum, send us an email. An e- a cum email. Podcast at gmail.com. These victims were subject to deprivation of all food and only given the filtered seawater. Fuck. Who? Oh, at one point, a group of roughly 90 Roma were deprived of food and given nothing but seawater to drink by Hans Eppinger, leaving them gravely injured. Have you ever drank seawater before? I've gotten, I may have never drank it, but I've gotten it in my mouth. Yeah. That shit will fuck you up, dude. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's rough. They were so dehydrated that others observed them licking freshly uh, mopped floors uh, in an attempt to get drinkable water. A Holocaust survivor named Joseph uh, Schofenig wrote a statement on these seawater experiments at DeKal. Schofenig explained how while working at the medical experimentation stations, he gained insight into some of the experiments that were performed on prisoners, namely those in which they were forced to drink salt water. Uh, He also described how victims of the experiments had trouble eating and would desperately seek out any source of water, including old floor rags. Oh, God. Uh, He was responsible for using the x-ray machine in the infirmary and describes how even though he had insight into what was going on, he was powerless to stop it. He gives the example of a patient in the infirmary who was sent to the gas chambers by Sigmund Rosker simply because he witnessed one of the low-pressure experiments. So. A lot of these guys, they just they, they knew the atrocities that were going on. They're just like, my lips are sealed because they knew that if they saw too much, if they speculated, if they said anything, that it was their ass on the line and they would be one. They would be the next one to be killed. Mm. And there was nothing. There was nothing. All you had to do was wake up. And if your eyebrows sat wrong that day, you were going to the gas chamber. You died. Fuck. There, there was, yeah, fuck, I'm fucked. I'm fucked. They'd be like, "Look how fat he is." There's no way he's eating everybody else's cabbage. I watched him pee. There wasn't a wiener. There's no, there's no blood. There's no AKC champion bloodline with him. Get him out of here. He was fucking a, a pussy on a foot yesterday. I saw him over there behind the slaughterhouse. It looked like he was pissing out of his thumb. Tiny dick. Tiny. Yeah. So from here, we go on to uh, sterilization and fertility experiments. I'm sure this is going to be fucking grand. (laughs) This is awful, dude. Yeah, the the law for the prevention of genetically defective progeny, which was passed on the 14th of July of 1933, legalized the involuntary sterilization of persons with diseases claimed to be hereditary. Weak-mindedness, schizophrenia, alcohol abuse, fuck. (laughs) Insanity, blindness, deafness and physical deformities and it's important to talk about this real quick because this was before the war started this is before all these yes it's 33 these sideshow experiments that they were performing on these people this is something that the government legalized before the experiments they pretty much this the law of prevention of genetically defective pro, pro, progeny or progeny progeny <clears throat> they said that if you weren't exactly what we were looking for, legally we're allowed to sterilize. You. Fucking crazy. We're, we're in that, and that carried over into that carried over into the concentration camps. They'd sterilize everybody. They, they had a really s- s- sneaky way of sterilizing people. But a lot of these people who were freed from these concentration camps would get out years later, like thank God, and they would go to start a family, and they would find out they're sterile. They were sterile. They couldn't. They couldn't create. It was because of the mass sterilization that was going on in the concentration camp. That's crazy. Um, <coughs> the law was used to encourage growth of the Aryan race through the sterilization of persons who fell under the quota of being genetically defective. 
Um, one percent of citizens between the age of 17 to 24 had been sterilized within two years of the law passing. So this is about 300,000 people that were sterilized. And I, I shorthanded right here, but what they would do, um, they would use various drugs to sterilize people, which was quite cross, uh, cost prohibitive. It was too expensive to sterilize people utilizing drugs. But then they figured out if they used enough x-rays, if they would perform x So when you get an x-ray done, they're like, hold still for just a second. All right, you're done. And then you're done getting your x-ray. They would put these people in front of the x-ray machine for between five to eight minutes, turn it on like a fucking microwave, point it directly at their genitals, and let the x-ray machine just cook on their on their genitals for five to eight minutes oh, fuck. to the point to where they would leave the x-ray, uh, the x-ray exam or whatever, and they would have burn marks all over their genitals because uh, how long they would leave the x-ray machine turned on. But the, the Nazis found out part of their eugenics, part of all these experiments that they are conducting, that, yeah, they could they could sterilize a few thousand people per day if they could get them to uh, commit to these to these x-rays but that was that was the problem is they could pe- they w- couldn't get people to say yeah i'll come in and get an x-ray for no reason from the yeah. fucking nazis yeah so they had to get creative with it hmm. yeah. um so carl Klauberg was the leading research developer in the search for cost-effective and efficient means of mass sterilization he was particularly interested in experimenting on women from the age of 20 to 40 who had already given birth Prior to any experiments, um, Klauberg x-rayed women to make sure that there was no obstructions to their ovaries. Next, over the course of three to five sessions, he injected the women's cervixes with the goal of blocking their fallopian tubes. The women who stood against him and his experiments or were deemed unfit test subjects were sent to be killed in the gas chambers. Uh, the Nazis also implemented X-ray radiation treatment in their search for mass sterilization. They gave the women abdomen X-rays. Men received them on their genitalia uh, for abnormal periods of time in attempts to invoke infertility. After the experiment was complete, the surgically remo- they surgically removed their reproductive organs, often without anesthesia, you know, par for the course for them, for lab analysis. Uh, Dr. Herman Steve, who used the war to experiment on live humans... Um, Steve <clears throat> specifically focused on the reproductive system of women. He would tell women their date of death in advance, and he would evaluate how their psychology, um, I'm sorry, their psychological distress would affect their menstrual cycles. That's so fucking That's awful. That's fucking crazy. That's like, so he would, he would gather these tep- test subject women and say, I hate to advise you of this, but we're going to execute you on July 1st. So then we tell these women who's watching thousands of people die around them. You have two months and then we're going to kill you. You have two months and then we're going to execute you. We're going to shoot you and put you in a fucking hole and we're going to be done with you. <sighs> so then he would say, okay, now she thinks she's going to die. I'm going to start studying her menstrual cycle and start studying what the stress does to her reproductive system, knowing that she's going to die the day, the day of her death. Now, after they were murdered, he would dissect and examine their reproductive organs. Some of the women were raped after they were told the date in which they would be killed so that Steve could study the path of the sperm through their reproductive system. Fuck. Dude, that's bad shit. That's man. fucking awful. And then people come to me like, I'm going to pray for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. fuck me. Jesus Christ. You're going to pray for me? <laughs> yeah. Who prayed for these fucking people? <laughs> you didn't. Someone didn't do their fucking job back in the nineteen forties. Yeah, shit, man. Um, that is the most diabolical shit that I've ever heard. It's awful. Yeah. He would tell them when he was gonna kill them. Sometimes he wouldn't kill them, but then he would tell them, "Hey, you're gonna die in two months. Here's the date. Here's your execution date." And then he would repeatedly rape these women. He would have them raped by soldiers. This guy needs to be canceled. <laughs> For sure. He got canceled, all right. Yeah. And then he would watch the the, the way the little spermies swam around. That's bad shit, man. Yeah. Um, somewhere between 1943 and October of 1944, 
Uh, experiments were conducted at Buch uh, Buchenwald to investigate the effect of various poisons. So they're testing, testing poisons on these poor people as well. The poisons were secretly administered to experimental subjects in their food. The victims died as a result of the poison or were killed immediately in order to permit autopsies. In September of 1944, experimental subjects were shot with poisonous bullets. It's not, it's not enough to just shoot them with normal fucking bullets, but then they had to poison them. I just unlocked those on uh, Modern Warfare this, the other day. The fucking poisonous bullets? Poisonous rounds, yeah. Jesus Christ. They were uh, subjected to torture, and they often died. The, some male Jewish prisoners had poisonous substances scrubbed or injected into their skin, causing boils filled with black fluid to form on the surface of their skin. These experiments were heavily documented as well as photographed by the Nazis. So from the res and we're kind of jumping forward to the, the findings of their experiments. The results of the Dachau freezing experiments have been used in some late 20th century research into the treatment of hypothermia. At least 45 publications have referenced the experiments as of 1984, though the majority of publications in the field did not cite the research. <clears throat> On, um, you're probably wondering what happened to all these scientists, all these uh, Dr. Jackal and Mr. Hyde motherfuckers, what happened to them. Uh, on August 19th, 1947, the doctors were all captured by Allied forces. They were put on trial in the U.S., uh, it was actually called USA versus Carl Brandt, <clears throat> commonly known as the doctor's trial. At the trial, several of the doctors argued in their defense that there was no international law regarding medical experimentation. Some doctors also claimed that they had been doing the world a favor. And that was the thing about these guys. When it was all said and done, there wasn't a single one that said, what we did was fucked up. Mm. What we did, we shouldn't. They were all unapologetic. They were exterminating a lower race, a lower class of people. They were doing the world a favor. They wouldn't take back anything they did. An SS doctor was quoted saying that, quote, Jews were the festering appendix in the body of Europe. He then went on to argue he was doing the world a favor by eliminating them. Then you have Pro Operation or Project Paperclip. So all of these doctors uh, from the doctor's trial, I want to say there was around 30 or 40 different doctors that were subjected to the trial. A lot of them were put to death, but then a lot of them were sentenced to life in prison and only served a mere handful of, um, a handful of years of their, of their sentencing. So they got out well before the life sentence. Uh, <clears throat> whenever, uh, so Mengele, the, the main, the main doctor through all this, one of the most, I guess, um, he was the most renowned scientist, renowned doctor of the group of the group here. Whenever he found out that the, uh, the allied forces were, were pressing down on Nazi Germany and it was imminent that these uh, concentration camps are going to be overthrown by Allied soldiers. He took all of his work and he fled. I want to say he fled to Argentina, which is allegedly where Adolf Hitler, Hitler <clears throat> fled as well. Yeah. But he did make it to Argentina, and I think when he made it to Argentina, he met up with a woman. Uh, he met a nurse or something. They kind of hit it off, and he gave her work. He gave her findings and his data to her. I think he got disposed of. Mm. Um, but nonetheless, he was there in Argentina. He got a job as a farmhand, as a, as a laborer, as a day laborer. <clears throat> so to, be, to, to go from being one of the most prolific scientists and authoritative doctors in your country to just a, uh, a, farmhand. a farmhand living by an alias, you know, he wasn't even going by his real name at this point. But the thing was, he lived. He escaped. I believe the Argentinian government uh, was hot on his trail a couple times. But the dude was good at just moving around and being a chameleon and blending in. And there was even a group called the Nazi Hunters for a little bit, which I think is – I don't know if there's – I think there might be a movie about that. Inglorious Bastards? I don't know if that's it or not. There's 
there's another Nazi hunter movie. Oh, okay. But it could be that one. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Fucking love that. It's one of my favorite movies. Yeah. They they were hot on they remember these Nazi hunters were they were hot on his trail as well, but he slipped through. Eventually, um he was I don't know if he was still in if he was in South America, but they they the government thought that he was still um just working as a farmhand going here and there. Mm-hmm. But then they did an investigation. They found out after uh, a lot of different complaints that he was still doing some uh, diabolical medical practices. There were some women that were dying in the area, but he was actually, for better or for worse, you may feel a certain way or you're not, but he was performing uh, abortions on women. But a lot of these women were dying. He wasn't. He wasn't performing a proper ah, okay. abortion. So okay. they almost kind of insinuate that he was maybe still doing some experiments on pe- women would come to him and say, um, "I would like to get an abortion," and then he would just fuck their body up doing his own studies. He lived well into um, the 1970s. Oh shit! I think he he lived until like 1971. And then he had numerous health um, health ailments, but he was in his pool. He eventually worked back up to where he had, like, acquired wealth again, which, you know, it's not it's crazy. Yeah. kind of speculation that somebody was taking care of him. Somebody prayed for him. <laughs> he prayed for that motherfucker. <laughs> but uh, one of the government, he was still getting money from somebody big time. For sure. But he had a stroke in his pool, and he died when he was... And he, uh, Too bad he, it wasn't 30 years sooner. He was old, man. He lived a full life, kind of always on the run. His son spoke out some years later. He said, even though he, I fucking hate what he did, he was still my dad. And yeah. he went to visit him a couple times. But his son said that when he visited him, he was a tortured soul. He was, mm-hmm. you know, really was like, you know, I just need to f- kill myself and get it over with. I need to, uh, I need to find a way out that he was – Always looking over his shoulder, always speculating that somebody was watching him. So hopefully he was tortured by the the torture that he inflicted upon people. Too bad wasn't enough though. <clears throat> yeah, but man, he um, he sailed off into the sunset. Really, he was one of the he was one of the top ones that needed to to be executed. A lot of the a lot of the the scientists and doctors associated with the, the experimentations, they were all hung on the same day. Uh, that's that's how they were executed. They they hung those guys, but. Uh, Operation Paperclip was a secret United States intelligence program in which more than 1,600 German scientists, engineers, and technicians were taken from former Nazi Germany to the U.S. for government employment after the end of World War II in Europe between 1945 and 1959. 14-year period. That's crazy. Von Braun, uh, a lot of these scientists were instrumental in the space race mm-hmm. and the Cold War for uh, Russia versus the United States of yep. America, a lot of those guys that did the did experiments in uh, during the concentration camps, a lot of those guys found work with the U.S. government after the war was over as scientists for our government. Crazy. It's not about who you know. It's about who you blow. <laughs> I'll blow everybody. Jesus, man. Such such dirty, filthy, disgusting dealings throughout this entire thing, you know? It just It's crazy, man. Like it's it's, it's sad. Crazy that like this the all this stuff was just like able to happen. Like I wanna, for what? I mean, you know. I want to say in total during the Holocaust, I think 6 I want to say six million Jewish people uh, died at the hands of the of the Nazis, Crazy. and then another three another three to four non Jewish people, not even from the war, but just people uh, captured. Three to four million three more. To another three to four million more yeah. died that were were non Jewish people. So in total, they're saying uh, likely About around 10 a, million, uh, 11. 11 million people. Were were linked to these concentration camp deaths. That's insane. That's a, such a stag. That's that's an entire country, man. Especially, especially back then too. <coughs> I mean, you gotta think it wasn't the Sad. seven eight billion people like it is now that are on planet. That's an entire. That's an entire nation. Yeah. In some places, that's that's awful, and it's important for me 
you know, this is kind of one of those things they go back and forth with. And there's there's a lot of people right now uh, preach the conspiracy that the Holocaust never happened. That's fucking crazy. I'll tell you what, the fucking Holocaust happened. And 11 million, 11 million people disembarked this earth and went to a heavenly plane someplace. What's the main train of thought behind that? Do you know the Holocaust deniers? Like, what is their, like, smoking gun that they say is the Shit, reason? Shit, I've never looked into it. Yeah, I don't think I have either. That'd be a cool, maybe a, a Patreon something for us. That's a little too... Uh, taboo for us to do on the main yeah on the main feed but it's a little risky i don't want people to think we're holocaust deniers <laughs> no and, and i'm not at all i, I no. very much believe that it happened one one million percent for sure yeah yeah man what are the the holocaust deniers what are they what like and and i i'm i'm one to hear somebody's argument man if they, for sure yeah if they raise a good point then uh then i'm like okay i need to think about that for a second mm-hmm. but much like you know people think that 9-11 was a conspiracy some people don't yeah um i'll hear all sides of the argument i think the flat earth shit that's a little far fetched for me <laughs> but i'll listen to you say it i've i've only the known moon isn't real i've only known one true ass flat earther this motherfucker looked like he had on on any given day he looked like he ingested three to four thousand dollars worth of drugs oh nice and then him trying to explain to me how there's no curvature to the earth I've known I've known several people who are like um really like super religious people who are were convinced that dinosaurs never existed. Yeah, man, that's one of the that's one of the legs I stand on when I kind of get upset about the religion thing. Yeah. Um the Bible doesn't talk about and if you say what does the Bible say about dinosaurs? There is a couple loose interpretations where the Bible talks about something big with a tail. Mm-hmm. Okay? maybe some kind of whatever but the dinosaurs far predate any religious culture any religious people yeah exactly any, any civilization they far predate that they far predate human human existence yeah and here's the thing dude when they say god created heaven and earth <laughs> what is the fucking point of dinosaurs they <laughs> when you talked about wasps and shit yeah when and god's like all right i got it <laughs> i got it dinosaurs all right let's unleash a dinosaur and then a couple few million years he's like i fucked up these things are meaner and shit i gotta try something smaller with, yeah. with balls and a dick <laughs> i'm gonna make humans Dinosaurs just turned into like the pit bull that everyone beat the fuck out of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he yeah. just like pelting them with fucking asteroids and comets and shit, and he, they're like, "Fuck this, we're pissed." And we have rich, rich scientific data, like carbon dating for these days for bones that have been found and artifacts. Those are those are man made and they're buried into the earth <laughs> to try to to try to uh, debunk the Bible, man. Don't you know? I just, I hope it's real. I hope it's, I hope it's so real. I hope heaven is so beautiful. Oh, I do too. Yeah, and I hope he shows it to me right before he flushes my ass down to hell. There's, <laughs> there's this really good interview where, um, um, Stephen Colbert was interviewing um Ricky Gervais, and Ricky Gervais is a huge agnostic. He's like, yeah, yeah. he's like, and the Stephen Colbert is, you know, the the complete opposite. He's pretty religious, and um. He said, see him, uh, Ricky Gervais is talking, and he's like, and I was, I was telling my wife about this the other day, which is, which I thought was pretty funny. He was talking about how, um, he's like, okay, well, let's, uh, let's say, let's put it this way. He was like, if a thousand years from now, say all of any, re- any religious document that, that exists right now, say if it were to disappear, just no trace of it, a thousand years from now, people are going to rewrite the things that they thought, you know, could have been they're going to rewrite stories tell their own stories and they're going to you know rewrite everything and make it like kind of, kind of how they did originally mm-hmm. but the thing with the science the scientific part of it is that within that next thousand years if all science books are destroyed or all scientific documents within the next thousand years you're going to be able to go back and prove all the scientific stuff without a shadow of a doubt because those facts are always going to line back up yeah you'll be able to have some sort of a basis of sure where everything came from whereas 
religion there's really not. Yeah, and then also... Um, but, I mean, hey, yeah, but I believe it, Joel, I don't fucking care. Yeah, and uh, the, the thing, man, it's cool to think about. And then the, the universe, how it, it's so infinite and vast. And when you look, and I've, if I've said it once, I've said it a million times. When you look up in the fucking sky, it never, ever ends. Mm-hmm. What you're seeing above you, uh, that never ends. Yeah. So then for for there just to be some guy up there that controls everything. He's just turning off and on light switches. Why does he need all this real estate? <laughs> is he only the god of earth or is he the god of the universe? But then why does why is my god good and then the the Taliban, their god not good? Yeah. Um, that, that, that was that was another thing that Ricky Gervais said. He said so he said according to like all religions throughout time, let's say there's 3000 gods. Like, you know, give, give or take, like right now, like that, what between all the religions that everybody believes, let's say there's roughly about 3,000 gods. And I'm only talking about Christianity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he, he's just making, you know, just a general, general assumption of what there is. And he's like, okay, so you being Christian, you believe in one, you don't believe in 2,999 of those gods, right? And he's like, well, yeah. And he's like, but I don't believe in just one more than you. Why is that so bad? Yeah, man. He's like, you don't believe in 2,999 of them, but you believe in one, but I don't believe in any. Are we really that fucking different? And you know then, what I mean? If you go to a, if you go to the city of Dayton, mm-hmm. city of Dayton, you got uh, Open Bible Church, you got Southern Baptist, you got Methodist, you got uh, First Baptist, you got Pentecostal, you got, Pentecostal, you got, you got non-denominational, you got you Catholic, got, uh, Christian, whatever. Presbyterian. You have all all of these different variations of the same religion mm-hmm. the jehovah jehovah, jehovah witness, witness yeah they all tweak it to make it fit their narrative and all it is is a grab for money if you had one if you had one centralized church in every city major city Series, oh series, <laughs> just Siri. looking up for series. Wow, she's fast fact checking us. <laughs> but if you had one, like just one synchronized church operation across the United States, mm-hmm. one one mega church in Dayton, one mega church in Cincinnati, one mega church south of town, one mega church north of town, I, I would get that. But for, I, I live in a relatively small city. There's probably fucking. 20, 30 different churches just in this three to four mile radius of where I live at. 20 to 30 different churches. And they're all preaching something a little bit different than the other. Yeah, yeah. But they're all preaching the same thing. That doesn't make sense, man. Yeah, it's... And God would not want, like, <laughs> you know, there's one way. Like... It says in the Bible, there's one way. Uh, I'm the way, the, the, the I'm the truth, the light, whatever, all that shit. Yeah. There's only one way to heaven. That's what it says in the Bible. There's only one way to heaven through me, the son of God. I am the whatever the, I don't remember the Bible verse, but I should because I've read it so many times. If there's only one way to church, if there's only one way to heaven, then why is there fucking 40 different ways to worship God in my little three to four mile area? <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, yeah. And what's, you know, what do you, uh, Fuck. and it makes you wonder, you know, if you just want to be, if you want to be religious, how do you know which one, which one's right, which one's right, which one what you want to go if to? If you sell out to God, I believe, I, I guess technically they would all be correct because they all worship, you know, they all think that, you know, Jesus yeah. is the son of God. He died yeah, for our but, sins, but, but a little bit, a little a, bit everything's different. a little bit differently. Yeah. What if you sell out to God as a Jehovah Witness and he's like, oh, I'm sorry, I was looking for a Southern Baptist. <laughs> you live your entire life giving and giving and doing well, preaching the gospel, witnessing, telling people the good news about the, our Lord and Savior. You spend your entire life doing everything the Bible tells you to do. But he's like, ah, motherfucker, you didn't do no holy rolling, did you? <laughs> <laughs> you fucked up. You was, there was three or four years of your life where you were gay. <laughs> <laughs> that is not okay. Remember that time? Yeah. <laughs> you re- touched that you touched that man's yeah, penis. I remember that time. Uh, all right. That's enough rambling. That's stupid God, shit. I don't even know how we got on that, but it's cool. You learn a lot about us. <laughs>
right, guys. I swear we're not trying to force anything down your guys' throats. No, no. <laughs> we, we just get well, on cool a little thing about us, man, is that never any point during that extended conversation did we try and tell someone how they should feel. No. You just rock out with your cock out, we man. Do, we really don't fucking – you can believe whatever the fuck you want. It's <laughs> yeah. not going to make us like you any more, any less. It doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. We're all people. It's cool to talk about things with people and not get – especially like in this day and age like it's so easy to be super defensive and get Man. angry at people and hate people for the yeah. things they would say or believe and it's that that's not how we are you know but if it's, you send us a mad email about this and fuck you <laughs> yeah and it's you that's fuck. what sucks is that you it's like you can't you're not allowed to have conversations for it to just be conversations anymore it's everything's so personal to everybody speaking of personal i'm getting naked right now Stop taking your fucking self so seriously everybody god damn it talk to you guys soon. I fucking love you. <laughs> I want to know what that message is the strict sharky re- fucking retracted. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank well, we're sorry. Everybody for being here. Hey, thank you for calling me a sexy beast. I appreciate that. Holly Cooper says late night, bros. It is absolutely. Yeah, that's what we do. A late night. Sometimes, but, sometimes it happens. So we'll talk to you guys next time <laughs> on YouTube. Yes, we will. Never had Chipotle. Never been gay. <laughs> Did he just say Luftwaffle House? <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, we're going there right now. <laughs> Hell yeah. Bye, guys. Fucking Luftwaffle.